This is a tutorial on how you can make cute little baby tennis shoe booties without the divider. And I will show how you can use either the circular loom or the long loom to create these booties. The great thing about the straight looms, if you do have the dividers, you can adjust the size, make them smaller or bigger so that they fit a smaller baby foot or a larger one. This is what it looks like done with the circular loom. And it makes for a bigger foot. So you're probably looking about six to nine months with that. Um, if you want to do newborn size, you will need your divider. And you'll want to set up for 22 pegs. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22. You'll want to set up for 22 pegs if you want to do the newborn. And what I'll do is I'll give the pattern for newborn on the long loom. But it's standard size if you choose to do the circular loom. It doesn't change. This is the size you get if you do the circular loom. What you'll need is you'll need two skeins or balls of white. And you'll need two balls of skeins of another color. Now what I am using is the Simply Soft in both, but if you choose to, you can use the Red Heart which you can, you can use just one of those, one skein of that. And if you choose to use the Lion brand, it's usually just one um, skein as well. So what we're going to do is we're going to get started. And I'm going to start with the long loom. And what you'll need is, um, because I'm doing the long loom with the divider, the divider is not going to move this time. So it's going to be pretty straight up. We're going to start off with our white, and you'll need long loom, a divider, or not, it's up to you. And you'll need a crochet hook, crafter's needle, and a looming hook. So, let's get started. Take an end, and tie it off. Okay. E-wrap all the way around, nice and loose. you're going to toss over all the way around. This will be your cast on row. Let's go around and toss it all over. Okay, we've gone all the way around, so let's go around again, and this time we're going to purl a full row. Take it up and under, pull it up, pull off, pull. You're going to go all the way around, because we're working circular right now, and you're going to purl all the way around. Release. Pull it through. Okay. And you're going to go in and purl, like you just did, for two more rounds. Two more. Okay, we've just done two more rows of purling, and then you're going to go in and do a toss over knit all the way around. Back to our beginning, 
And then we're going to go in and purl another row. Completed it. Two purled rows. You're going to cut the white, move it to the side, and now we're going to change to color. to do a toss over knit all the way around for one row. So toss over. Make sure you do it fairly loosely. Then take and go around again and leave your stopping point. We're now going to start working flat. We want to leave five. One, two, three, four, five. We want to leave five pegs for the tongue. So this is our new starting point. And what we want to do is we want to go ahead and we want to decrease. So pull that back one. One, two, three, four, five. We're going to count over five. One, two, three, four, five. That's our tongue. And then we're going to take this one and decrease and put this on the next peg over. Take it and put it on the next peg over. It's a reason to um, do the toss over knit as loosely as possible. Now, we want to go back and knit a row. them together. Now that we've made it all the way around, we're going to take this peg, put it over on the next one. Another two decrease. Toss both over. Make sure it's a little looser. again, decrease again, make 
make sure we count. So we know we got five here. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. So we have sixteen pegs. So we have sixteen pegs. And we'll stop. There. So go ahead and go around. We won't do any more decreasing. So toss both those over. And then you're going to do a straight row back. Just toss over knit. And then you're going to cast off. So you'll need your crochet hook. Whip it around. Pull through, put the next loop on the hook, pull it through, pull through, the next two loop on the hook, pull through, pull through, keep going all the way around to here and we'll go from there. Okay. We're done with that. Snip the end. Pull it through. Tighten it. And pull it up. Now it's time to work on our tongue. I like to tie a noose knot or a slip knot. And what you want to do is go in and do six rows straight. Now that you've done that, you want to decrease one on both ends. Down to three. Curve that tongue. And then do a straight row across and cast off. And cast it off. and tighten. Pull that up. Now that we are done with our loom, we'll put it to the side. We're done with our color. Go ahead and tighten up your cast on. Pull it. You know that's there. Start over here. Pull that and go all the way around.
Go ahead, flip it inside out. Thread your needle. Okay, you want to take a crochet hook and you want to pull the ends in and weave so. them in so that they're not showing before we start crocheting our edge onto the shoe. So go ahead and do that. All right, now we're going to start crocheting our tongue to the base of the shoe. And I'm just going to do a simple old little knot on the ex excess of where I started the tongue. Make sure that that's nice and tight. And now I'm going to start crocheting. And what I want to do is I want to stick the hook through both ends, like we're going to sew it together. And you're going to wrap it and pull it through. And then you're going to pull through two more times, wrap it, pull through, wrap it, pull through. And what you're doing is you're going to go to the next bit and you're going to go in and act like you're going to sew it together. Pull through. Wrap and pull both through again. And then pull through and then pull through again. And what you're doing here is you're creating your loops for your shoestring that you're going to put through. And we're just going to speed that up and get through that section. But that's what you're going to do. You're going to pull both through and then wrap, pull through both loops, and then loop, loop. Next, you're going to just do an edge to the back of the shoe, which is just go through. And it's kind of like the cast off, but you're not casting off. You're just going through and you're putting the hook through the shoe, wrapping, pulling through, wrapping, and pulling both loops through. Then you're going to stick the hook in again. And you're going to do this all the way around the edge. You're going to wrap pull through and then wrap and pull both through. I'm not a crochet person. I'm working on incorporating more crocheting into some of my projects and practicing that. So if there's any crochet people out there, forgive me. I'm still kind of a beginner at it, but the looming I'm pretty secure on. But continue doing that all the way around. And now you've reached the other side of your tongue and you're going to start connecting them again like you're going to sew it together and you're going to bring it through and then do two more. You're going to create your loops for your shoestring. Send it through both sides. Loop it. Bring it through. Loop again. Bring through both loops. And then loop, bring it through, loop, bring it through. Continue that all the way to the base of the shoe. Alright, snip it. 
pull through, pull tight, and then you're going to take the crochet hook and you're going to pull it to the center of the shoe so that that excess isn't sitting out there. Okay. Next, you just want to lace your excess string in like you would a normal tennis shoe. So just lace it up as you would a regular shoe. Tighten it. Tie it in a little bow and you're done. Woohoo!